So on to our last session of the afternoon. Uh, with its hundreds of brands, from Dove Soap to Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream, Unilever is one of the pillars of the global marketing and media ecosystem. CMO Keith Weed, Weed presides over a 6 billion euro budget. He'll talk about how to, he does that with Alexandra Suich, media editor of The Economist. Good luck, thank you. Good luck, Keith. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And I'm going to be up here for the next few minutes um, with Alexandra. And she's going to be um, doing a bit of a one-on-one -on -one, uh, interview with me. But before I do, um, I thought I'd put some context um, rather than jumping straight in. And we have a context about uh, really what myself as the chief marketing and communications officer uh, of Unilever, the second largest advertiser in the world, is, is thinking a little bit about the world we all live in. And you can see it's got a very grandiose title, uh, Reinventing Marketing. And what I really mean by that is you know, we are all reinventing marketing. I've seen more change in the last five years uh, than the 25 years uh, before uh, in this industry. And it's impacting, of course, so many different parts uh, of everything we do in building brands. And if we only go back just a few years, and you will remember it well, if I look at the age of people in the room, there were some people around there doing the marketing to people, uh, the broadcast, the, uh, the family around the TV. And of course, uh, those alone, uh, uh, that approach uh, is long behind us. And now we're very much marketing with people. Uh, and people aren't just interested about how great uh, a magnum tastes, uh, or indeed, uh, uh, what prices, etc. What they want to know is also what it stands for uh, and how they engage in it. And the marketing with people, you can say, well, that's been going on for a few years. I think the big difference is now is the sheer scale. So if you look at some of our big brands uh, around the world, around 20% of the content now is, is, is made by users, people building our brands. And if you think of it for a brand owner, that's incredibly challenging in keeping control of the very brands uh, that you uh, own and nurture uh, and love. And I think it's about to move again. If the internet and, uh, uh, and everything about connectivity was one huge shift for people and hence uh, for brand owners, the combination of, of mobile, uh, visual, and personal uh, is going to make it move again. And, and again, mobile at scale, with 1.7 billion smartphones in the world, with virtually uh, everyone having uh, phones, even now uh, across Africa. I was in uh, Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana earlier this year where I took this picture on the left. Uh, and what struck me uh, is I'm beginning to see in Africa what I saw three or four years ago in Asia, uh, basically everyone uh, out there with a, with a mobile phone. And that connectivity is, of course, a huge opportunity. That personal connectivity is a huge opportunity for, for marketers and, and, brand, uh, and brand owners. The middle visual is obviously a Vine video, uh, which sort of reminds me so much that uh, video, the, the moving two, 2D picture is still uh, a thing that we love. Um, and it's the amount of, of viewing now on smartphones, 74% uh, of people are viewing video on smartphones. And again, it's the scale. Uh, that's gone up 13 uh, percentage points since last year, a big shift. And then last but not least, uh, the personal bit um, and the change there. I mean, we all have mobile phones in our pockets or our bags. Our mobile phone is basically the dashboard to our life. It's still out there, uh, but what we're starting to see, as you know, with wearables, is it's going to be connected to you. It's going to be exoskeleton. You're going to have devices like uh, the iWatch connected to you. And of course, the step after that will be endoskeleton when we have devices actually uh, inside us, enhancing us as a, as a species, as, a, as an individual. But even the step right now of just getting those things closer and one step beyond mobile, I think, is, is radically changing the way we do marketing. And as we all know, um, it's chaotic out there. These are, uh, are visuals you might have seen before, the lunarscapes. Uh, this one is of mobile. Many of you operate on this. Uh, this is the, the, the ecosystem we've all invented over the past few years. Uh, that's uh, social, as you can see, just as uh, mad and crazy. And if I add in again uh, data, um, you can see uh, what marketeers, advertisers, etc., have to work in is the combination of all those three. And that's why I think we have to start thinking about a very different type of marketing. Something that goes a bit deeper, that simplifies and, and pulls all this together. And I think, as ever, uh, it'll be the brand that comes to the rescue. Brands that have real meaning, brands with purpose, brands that can uh, connect uh, with people at a deeper level. So whether that be Dove and the work that Dove's been doing in championing self-esteem, 
or as you can see here, Ben and Jerry's on the climate march in, in New York just a couple of weeks ago. It's uh, that move from uh, marketing to consumers to mattering to people. And maybe it's also a move that will make marketing noble again. So on that thought, I'm going to sit down and join um, Alexandra and uh, have a little bit of a, a conversation around what is really going on uh, in the world of marketing right now and how is it impacting the way we're building brands. So thank you for that. Um, we last spoke in Cannes when I was working on my special report for The Economist about advertising and technology. <clears throat> uh, people often think about reinvention as leading to a new sustainable normal, something like what we saw in previous decades. But one of my questions for you is whether marketing reinvention will just mean further chaos, whether this chaos that you point to will be the new normal or whether we'll actually reach a point of new order where things become clearer for the community. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I suppose we should ask everyone out there uh, about what your thoughts of the future. They hard to predict the future. Uh, certainly in the near future, um, I do see more chaos because the, the people who simplified it before uh, aren't there in the same way. So from a marketer's perspective, uh, it used to be the classic advertising agency. You used to go down and, and uh, to JWT or Ogilvy & Mather and they'd show you the TV ad, the, the uh, print ad, the radio ad, and they'd bring all that together. And of course, as you all know now, we deal with lots of different agencies, a gaming agency, a mobile agency. Uh, and so the actual industry is fragmented, which means the biggest risk I think we have is, is our brands are, are going to be fragmented by that. So I think, yes, the chaos will continue. Uh, but at some stage, as always, there is a, a moment of coming together. So if you went back to the very early days of TV, there were separate print agencies to TV agencies. And then the agencies that we got to know for uh, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s were, were actually a combination of them all. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've just seen, of course, uh, publicists buying uh, Sapient. Um, you know, when do these holding companies start really bringing together their, their offer mm -hmm. to make it uh, simpler than it is right now? How do you approach the issue of fragmentation of your brand? You can see a lot of the television commercials that go on and okay them. It's probably mm. very difficult to do that with digital yes. ads. How do you approach that organizationally? Yeah, no, no, that's, that's the sleepless nights. Um, uh, when ha we have uh, meetings with Facebook and they show you some of the posts that have been put up in Malaysia or, uh, or, or uh, around the world. And uh, you're right, we spend a lot of time uh, lovingly crafting uh, these sort of big tent pole uh, activities, uh, TV ads, etc. Um, but the ongoing in between, the 24-7 um, uh, posts, etc., uh, are, are not something that uh, I can uh, approve. We're the second largest advertiser in the world. We do an awful lot of advertising. And have there been near disasters that have come to your door? Yeah, look, of course. Um, life wouldn't be life without a few, uh, few things that make your toes curl. Uh, luckily, we haven't had anything that's, that's been a true disaster. Um, uh, hence, we put a lot into, uh, on one side, training. Um, so some people really just, you know, don't, don't get it um, and uh, have um, you know, inappropriate uh, conversations in, in, the, uh, in the outdoor space on social about business they shouldn't be doing, through to um, people really just uh, not having a, a clarity of, of what builds a brand. Um, and so, um, I don't know, a, a picture of a kitten always goes very well on social media, but a picture of a kitten uh, to, uh, to promote Dove, for example, isn't exactly on brand. Right. And that's the sort of stuff we're playing with. Um, because no longer, yeah, we have uh, 6,000 marketers. No longer is it possible to police everyone on, on the big pieces. You need to have a, a real clarity of what your brand stands for and then work within the, that framework. Right. One of the things that seems to be holding back digital marketing, as you point out, is the complexity. And you can push forward a television ad campaign much more quickly if you wanted to give the go-ahead than you could uh, a digital campaign. What will fix that? What do you see as the solutions for fixing the chaos that you pointed out? Um, well, I think some things are, are, are absolutely technology uh, and, um, and uh, process uh, solved. So I'll give you a perfect example. At the very beginning, it was impossible to do global Facebook pages. Um, and in fact, we championed with, with Facebook, um, and Dove was in fact the, the brand that did it first, was the idea where we could actually have something that was coherent um, uh, across uh, Facebook that enabled us to locally engage with uh, people, but also uh, from a global level, be able to get content out across the world. Mm -hmm. um, 
I haven't yet been so successful with Twitter, so if anyone from Twitter, here's another reminder to Dick Costello and team uh, that, that global brands need some global uh, coherence, uh, but we'll get there, I'm sure. Interesting. I wrote about Twitter for this week, and it, I think what you say fits with what other marketers are saying, that it's yeah. difficult to have that global reach sometimes. Yeah. Um, I'd like to ask you about e audience. So marketers are obsessed with reaching millennials and the, the people who are hidden from them and so difficult to reach that they have to go to these obscure YouTube channels to get them. Are marketers right to think they need to reach them? Are marketers missing a beat by focusing on younger people who actually don't have the discretionary spending power that older people have? And have marketers lost sight of the real game, do you think? Yeah, I think what's going on is, is um, uh, there's a very much of a bipolar world going on. Yeah, we all uh, learned that the way um, every sort of audience was distributed was with this normal curve, with the, with the average in the middle. Uh, and whether it be around age or whether it be around um, you know, people who are overnourished, uh, we've got sort of a billion people who are overnourished in the world, we have 800 million people uh, who go to bed hungry. Uh, there's these little blips at both ends of the, uh, of the normal curve. So you have this sort of bipolar uh, effect that's going on. And I think that's also true uh, with what you're saying, both about income and, and, and age. So we have some very rich people, we have some very poor people. Uh, and uh, we also have uh, a big uh, group of uh, older people who are wealthy. But at the end of the day, the, the millennials are the biggest group of people in the world, if you actually add up the numbers. Uh, and uh, uh, they are a huge target. And of course, uh, by definition, they are our future. Um, so uh, depending on your brands and your brand target, uh, absolutely you want to get to the 18 to 30 year olds. But you're right, it is much, much harder. Uh, than it used to be. So we spend an awful lot of time um, actually trying to get to people from different angles to ensure that we still have uh, enough. I mean, at the end of the day, we're a mass marketer. So we are, you know, tea and ice cream and shampoo and, and washing powder. So what we're looking to do is e every day, two billion people use our product. So we're trying to get to a, a big audience. The old belief was that you could hook a consumer and they would stay with you for life, though, if you got to them young. Has that, got, has that thinking gone out the window, actually? I'm not sure. Was that ever true? Well, I think people are much <laughs> more fickle uh, today. Yeah, I don't they? know. Romantically, yes. <laughs> um, um, yes, back in the day when. No, I don't know if it was ever true. I, I think it's certainly, um, uh, there's much more competition out there, um, not just for brands, but for share of voice. There's a clutter in the media. So I think breaking through that clutter is important. I think creativity has never been so as important as it is right now to break through that clutter. I think people um, are willing to, to buy from a, a portfolio of brands. Um, and what I mean by that is, is uh, if I was to say to you now, here's uh, $15,000, go and buy a car, you can imagine some cars you would buy. I guarantee you there are literally thousands and thousands of cars you could buy for that. But you have a portfolio in, the, in your mind of what you do. And that's all I think you can actually hope to do as a marketer is, I want to be in the portfolio. You know, if you're going to have ice cream tonight, I want you to be thinking about Ben & Jerry's or Magnum or Conetto, uh, because those are the brands that we have. And then which one you buy is, is less important. And, if we have the majority in your, in your portfolio, then obviously I'm a happier guy. I think that's a great point. Uh, I'm New York based, and one of the topics of conversation that it continues to fascinate people is whether the end of television as we know it is mm. nigh. Yes. Um, have you moved some of your budget out of traditional television and started to talk about video rather than TV? Yeah, I mean, it, it's something that, that we as an industry talk about a lot. I suppose, what is television? Um, uh, at the end of the day, yeah, we, as I said earlier, we love the, the two-dimensional moving picture. If that moving picture is on a square screen, which is up on your wall, or, or on a laptop, uh, on a, a, a desk, or an iPad in your hand, or an iPhone in your hand, to me, actually, that distinction between you know, video and TV is less important. I mean, the thing is, it is important. It's important to the Samsungs and the uh, Sonys of the world who make TVs. But then and say, to the what is it? And to the content owners. Pardon? To the content owners, presumably, too. Yeah, no, a, no, absolutely. Uh, but I'm saying for an advertiser, engaging people on different platforms is, is, uh, is a challenge. But, um, but at the end of the day, of course, you know, TV is still massive. Uh, by the way, the, the vast majority of our, our spend, even though we're talking about other things, still goes through TV. If someone's going to spend $4 million for a 30-second spot in the Super Bowl, you've got to believe it's still worth it. So uh, I still think there's a, a huge future for TV. It's, uh, its death is, is very prematurely talked about. Has there been a shift in your thinking, though? Or is that actually over-covered? Over uh, 
a shift in sorry in your thinking to about television yeah, and no, its efficacy. No, there's a shift in our thinking. Uh, I mean, our actual spend in TV continues to go up, but that's because we actually have been increasing our overall advertising. So um, I know a lot of people when they talked about the uh, the crisis that you know advertising went down, etc. We we uh, our sort of view was you know don't spoil a good crisis and uh, increase your advertising instead. So we increased our advertising through it, and and with that. Um, uh, our actual spend in TV has gone up, but as a percentage, you're right, our spend has gone down uh, as an overall pie uh, as we've increased uh, spend elsewhere. So, and it goes to digital? Yes, absolutely. Um, so it, it goes, well, it, again, di digital, I suppose, is, is, is a, a term as, in some ways, as useless as traditional, even though I use it a lot, because uh, what's with inside digital is mobile and social and, and video and search, etc. Uh, I, I'd say the real winners um, uh, uh, have been social and search and increasingly mobile. Okay. Yeah. And is th will there be one winner for social? We talked about Facebook versus yeah. Twitter. Where would you put your bets? Um, well, I would, I would argue there's something slightly different. So I would uh, argue that Twitter is, is more about real-time publishing uh, of the moment and that they own that space more than anyone else. And I think social, as certainly as I feel and know it, is, 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 is Facebook own that. So I think there's room for, for, for both of them and we don't need to do a, a sort of a, a fight to the top out of both of them. Now, is there room for anyone else? That's a, an interesting question. You just have to go out on the floor and see there's lots of people who would like to be the next Twitter uh, uh, or Facebook. But I what do you need for that to work? Do you, yeah. you basically need scale and precision, is that right? Tra targeting capability and a massive audience for, yeah. for you to find them attractive and as a social player? I think so. If you, if you want to um, speak to people, engage with people, network with people, wouldn't you go where everyone is? Um, and so I think it's increasingly difficult for people to break into the market, certainly if you see the sort of numbers that Facebook now has. It's just a difficult one because it's hard to compete with an audience of 1.4 billion. It's yeah. an audience of unprecedented scale. As you yeah. know, um, one more question for you, which concerns a bit, it, it's about social, but it's the consequences of a targeted advertising, which is privacy. Mobile unlocks tremendous opportunities, so do social networks. How are you approaching it, and do you worry about the privacy implications? Yes, oh, sorry. You, uh, no, yes. no, do you worry I, about I, a consumer backlash? Uh, no, tr truly uh, concerned about it, because I think uh, technology is ahead of regulation right now, and um, I think there are things going on in technology that even the regulators don't quite understand. Um, and so I think it's for the, again, for the brand owners um, to, to take the responsibility, because um, you know, trust is something that, that arrives o on foot but leaves on a horse. And if you get it wrong, you get it really, really wrong. With the transparency and, and the ability for people to search, um, I think it's a huge risk for, uh, for brand owners if they get it wrong. So my principle is, is uh, advance uh, down this, this path with caution uh, and make sure you're, you're bringing utility. Um, so if you look for something like All Things Hair, which gives the ability of um, people to search and find out how to do hairstyles um, on, on, um, on Google, um, this is a perfect example of real utility because we can, we can see a trend of when a hairstyle like a messy bun is going to become uh, something that people want to search. And we produce the videos with vloggers to then support that. And that's a great use of data. It's good, real utility, doesn't get into privacy. But, but on the other side, you're right, with a mobile phone with an individual ability to uh, connect with that person, unless you uh, do that well and don't abuse that trust uh, and become annoying, um, you will... Uh, well, ultimately, you will, you'll suffer the worst punishment, which will be people will just walk away. Uh, and we certainly don't want to have that. Okay, well, unfortunately, I think it's our time to walk away. But thank you so much. And so much to talk about. Hopefully, we'll be back here next year for an update. Great. Thank, thank you for you your time. Me. Thank you.